Okay, let's go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Eva, can you show us how to do the sign of the cross? Show us again. Show us. In the name of the Father. Show us. Come on. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, oh, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay. That's Eva demonstrating how to do the sign of the cross. Okay. So today we're going to read from uh, the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 9, verses 27 to 31, for the first Friday, or the Friday of the first Friday. week of Advent, December 3rd, 2021. Okay. Jesus passed by, and two blind men followed him, crying, Son of David, have pity on us. When he entered the house, the blind men approached him and said to them, and he, Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I can do this? Yes, Lord, they said to him. Then he touched their eyes and said, Let it be done for you according to your faith and their eyes were opened jesus warned them sternly see that no one knows about this but they went out and spread the word of him through all that land so how interesting jesus uh, performs a miracle for two blind men But look at how these two blind men approached Jesus. What did they say to Jesus? What did they say to Jesus? Huh? Have pity on us. But prior to that, what did they say? How did they how did they address Jesus? They said what? Shavi? Son of David, right? Son of David, have pity on us. Okay, Eva, Eva, you need to listen. Son of David, have pity on us. You know, that, that, uh, that way of addressing Jesus is very revealing because it tells us that these blind men are very knowledgeable about um, their own Jewish faith. They knew very well who Jesus was. It tells me that they were very well uh, educated about their faith. They knew uh, the truth about who this so-called miracle worker who's been going about town curing people is all about. Right? They understood who Jesus was and therefore they called him and addressed him in precisely the best way they knew how, which is that he is the son of David. That he was the promised Messiah. Those are uh, all uh, connected, um, um, you know, ideas around Jesus, right? That he was the promised Messiah, the son of David, okay? Um, and they they called him by, by his name, the son of David, the heir to the throne of David. They recognized his, his kingly stature. They recognized... Um, how important he was, right? And they asked him to have pity on them, to look upon them with mercy, to look upon them with pity, because they might have been suffering from that predicament of blindness for a long time. Maybe they were born blind, as many people of this, uh, with this kind of infirmity um, have been. And they want to see. They want to be able to experience the beautiful creation around them. They want to be able to see the people that that uh, that they love. They want to be able to uh, 
uh, see all the nice colors and flowers and things around them. Who wouldn't, right? Especially if you're suffering from a kind of a deprivation um, that really hinders you from not only enjoying life, but enjoying the rest of creation, but uh, also functioning properly, right? So how is this relevant for us? How is this particular uh, gospel uh, narrative today relevant for us? You see, many times, many times, all throughout our lives, we can be these blind men. These blind men represent us in many ways. And I don't mean that in a physical way, because... We are not blind. None of us are blind physically. But many times we could be spiritually blind. We can be blind because we don't understand what's wrong with us. We can be blind because sometimes we don't want to admit to the truth about us. That is, in fact, a worse kind of blindness. That is a very bad kind of blindness. Worse than the physical blindness that this, that this men experience. Because sometimes spiritual blindness is our fault. Unlike these two blind men, they were born blind. It was not their fault at all for them to be born blind. But for us, when we are blind to our own selves, when we are blind and we don't realize what's wrong with us, when we are blind to our own reality and don't understand that we are not living up to the expectations of God, that we are sinful and we can't even recognize it, well, that's a worse kind of blindness. That's a worse kind of blindness. And many people go about their lives blind in that sense. And that's the reason why they... They don't improve. That's the reason why nothing happens ever to their lives. That's why they don't progress in virtue. They don't progress in sanctity. They don't progress in anything. Even in just doing what, what is the most ordinary thing in life for them to do. They don't even do it well. Why? Because all of that is a consequence of their own blindness to their own shortcomings, blindness to their own sins, blindness to their own challenges. That too often enough, they don't even want to admit to themselves. It's like, there's nothing wrong with me. Everything that's going on wrong in the world is not because of me, it's because of other people around me. It's their fault that I am like this. Never about me. <laughs> Never about me seeing what's wrong with me. Right? And that is the worst kind of blindness you can ever experience. When we, are, when we are blind to our own defects, blind to our own shortcomings, blind to our own sins. So what's the solution? The solution is, number one, we have to recognize that we cannot go it alone. That no amount of superpowers will help us overcome our defects. And help us overcome our sinfulness. No, we need the grace of God to do this. That's the first thing we need to recognize. If we want to improve our lives, if we want to overcome this blindness, we need the grace of God. We need to acknowledge the Son of David. The Son of David, Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, who has the power to help us and cure us and deliver us. From this malady of spiritual blindness. We have to understand that and recognize that and believe that. That's why he says here, let it be done to you according to your faith. Okay? He cured them because they had faith in Jesus. So that's the first thing we need to understand. That no amount of our own superpowers and cockiness, you know, I can do this. It's not going to solve the problem. Right? We need to acknowledge the power of Jesus Christ to work on our souls. So we need to pray. The first thing, we need to pray for that grace. Second thing we need to do is to really be sincere in our examinations of conscience. 
is to really try to look deep into ourselves and be sincere in that effort. Okay? And we do the examination of conscience every night. I recommend, you know, doing the examination of your own conscience on a daily basis. As we do in our own household here. Every night we gather together in the family room and we ask ourselves questions that help us examine ourselves. And we need to do that with sincerity. We need to do that with full transparency and with full honesty. Otherwise, if we're just sitting there and going through the questions one by one, but we're not really deeply interrogating ourselves and asking ourselves about, you know, how we can improve and what we are blind to and what our sins are all about and what our shortcomings are all about, well, then we're not going to improve. So we have to be honest about ourselves, about, about doing the examination of conscience. We have to be transparent with ourselves. And we have to be sincerely putting the effort to understand ourselves. Because that is the only way that we can get rid of that spiritual blindness. So let us pray. Pray for the grace of enlightenment. Every time we do the examination of conscience, let's pray to the Holy Spirit. That's why we do that. Right? We say the prayer to the Holy Spirit to help us, uh, for, him, for the Holy Spirit to enlighten our minds and our hearts to understand what our shortcomings are, what our sins are, and what's causing us the blindness not to recognize the truth about ourselves. And this time of Advent is a very nice time to do that. A very nice time to get to know ourselves a little bit better. To overcome our shortcomings and our blindness to our own sins. So that we can do a little house cleaning of our souls. So that we can really be very well prepared to welcome Jesus when he comes at Christmas time. Okay? So let's take advantage of Advent to do that. Let us not waste this opportunity that the church in this liturgical season. The church in this liturgical season is giving us this beautiful opportunity to do a good examination of conscience, yes, to do a good examination of conscience so that we better ourselves. Okay, Ava, we are done. Uh -uh. Did you learn anything, Ava? <laughs> okay, let's go. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Saint Michael, pray for us. Saint Rafael, pray for us. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, by the way, it's a feast of Saint Francis Xavier, December third. Pray for us. Holy Mary, I hope and see the wisdom. Pray for us. And folks, those of you listening to these broadcasts and these podcasts, uh, if you find any value in in uh, in what we are doing here. Uh, please spread the word. Um, go ahead and subscribe to this channel on YouTube and also on our Facebook page. And, and spread the word so that other people may perhaps uh, also join us in this journey and learn uh, with our family as we try to understand the message of the gospel and try to understand our Catholic faith and how to apply it in our daily lives. So thank you for joining us. And please subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.